I just finished this fall mixed media project and it began with a vision for something totally different, but I just went along with it and with whatever seemed to be emerging and ended up with this. I started with matte gel medium to glue down random background pieces. And since I'm happiest doing art with a scripture focus, I began with a verse from Isaiah that I cut out of our church bulletin from this Sunday. I also tore a page from my thrift store hymnal used just for um, mixed media type things. At this stage in the project, I can lay them down in any direction. I will initially be using white gesso to soften them and blend everything together, but they could actually be completely obscured by the time I'm done adding multiple layers to create the final look. And I used pieces of a coffee soap napkin, which I thinned down to one ply. And that same bulletin then offered another section from Isaiah, and I added scripture from my thrift store Bible as well. A photo of a squiggly lighting fixture from a magazine looked kind of interesting, and in the end it didn't really fit with everything else, but I did glue it in. I'm not really worried about what fits at this point because it's just breaking the page and making an interesting background, and I can blur out or erase anything that doesn't work later. I threw in scraps of mulberry paper, which is a handmade paper from the mulberry tree. It's filled with fibers, and I just continued adding background until I kind of filled up the page. I always save magazines and keep a box of interesting things that I find in them or that I thought I was going to journal with last time and didn't. I may want to um, include them in a project someday. My church prints beautiful bulletins and sermon outlines with plenty of material to repurpose. Uh, right now we're in a series called When God Comes Near and it's full of scriptures and word art about hope and peace and joy and love. So I'm saving all of them. Occasionally I'll sit and go through them and other magazines and cut out words and pictures and save them for future projects. It really doesn't take long at all to assemble just this trove of treasures to work from. As I was looking through my collection, I came across this window and the colors just tied in beautifully with the background that I had assembled. And I could start picturing those um, coffee-soaked napkins as a place where maybe vines or flowers would be hanging over the window. So I started cutting it out and I glued it down with the matte gel medium. And like I said earlier, this is where a different vision began to emerge. I'm working on a plastic tablecloth to protect my furniture and I'm pausing the camera now and then to wipe up some of my mess and wash my brush. I do that frequently so the glue doesn't dry on it. I also try to never use an expensive brush on this type of work because it can really tear them up. When I'm gluing these items down to notice that I'm starting in the center and brushing outwards towards the edges to push the glue any ripples or bubbles out towards the edges. I'm gluing everything to a very heavy watercolor paper and moisture can cause it to warp or curl in areas. So once I'm all done, I'm going to paint the back of the page with clean water. And while it's still wet and wants to curl up even more, I'll lay a flat board over the whole thing and weigh it down, something heavy, until it's completely dry. Let it sit that way for maybe two or three days, depending on how much moisture is in the air. Anyway, it should emerge perfectly flat. Here's my first layer of heavy white gesso. It's, it comes in several different consistencies. This one's heavy, thicker. So when everything starts looking chaotic, fractured, or even too busy or bold colored, it's time to calm it all down and I use this heavy gesso. I like to apply it with my fingers. It gives me more control of where it's going and how thick I put it on in each area. But it is pretty gritty, so my laptop sometimes doesn't recognize my fingerprint to unlock it after a project like this. You can also use this heavy gesso for stenciling, and I've never used it for this particular stencil. Actually, I've never used this particular stencil before, so I thought maybe I'd give it a try. It kind of looks like pine trees when I should hold it at this angle. I'm beginning to visualize or imagine the fall colors at this point with some pine trees mixed in. The window panes have some fall colors in them, but the one on the right, I can also see city sidewalks, light posts, 
and even telephone wires that just have to go. So I've mixed up a blue watercolor. It's a bit translucent so that you'll be able to see a hint of something through the window, but hopefully it'll feel more like you're looking into the house surrounded by fall foliage rather than being inside the house and looking out. If you're anything like me, somewhere in every project, you'll want to throw it in the trash can and start over. And never again set yourself up for frustration because of your lack of talent. That's where I am right here in this project. I'm thinking, why on earth did I plaster white arrows turned sideways all over this page? But I really encourage you, don't give up. This type of mixed media offers such freedom and forgiveness. Just keep working at it. The beauty of mixed media is the ability to layer right over what you don't like, whatever doesn't work. I primarily work with watercolor, so I'm not used to that option. So about here in a project, I'm disappointed, I may get frustrated, and often I walk away from it for a while. That's the perfect solution. Come back to it with fresh vision, take a walk, enjoy God's creation outside, Take time to be present with others and clear your head and then come back to it. And it's amazing um, what vision you'll get for what to do next. I'm using the photograph of the window as my template and I just keep working to make it my own. I'm mixing brown watercolors for the windowsill, which feels like a better fit than the original colors, the grays, that sort of thing. Above the window, I used a yellow and burnt sienna watercolor to add layers to the coffee stain napkins and start building up a fall foliage look. And I'm pondering how to incorporate or erase those darn white stenciled areas. It wouldn't be so bad if it was just those chevron tips of a pine tree look, but there's also the line connecting them and they're so stark white. Um, I'm going to drop some green acrylic ink into the area surrounding the window to help indicate layers of trees and leaves beginning. And I'll spray some water on them to spread the color and tilt the paper to help move it around. Hopefully that'll start um, seeping into those uh, tree areas and lessen the impact of the white stenciled areas. The green is pretty bright and notice that the gesso did not absorb it. So I want this to be the lightest part of the trees. So I'm going to use that gesso to tone it down some more. Really just about any time I feel something's not working, I can push it all back with gesso and then build it back up in a way that I like better. The white is great for blending and softening and it kind of makes everything look more cohesive and then you can add another layer. I decided to tackle the trees straight on with the gesso in hopes of toning them down a bit. And I really think it does help. So I have some hope that I'm gonna be able to deal with them here and there. I'm also gonna add a light layer of blue for the sky background while still letting some of the layers of texture and scripture, uh, the hymns, the napkins, everything in the background peek through a little bit. I want to create some bushes under the windows uh, to um, maybe have flowers poking out and kind of uh, growing into the forefront. So I'm adding an initial layer of green for that as well. I think as I get used to working with mixed media and have more experience in art, that I'll be able to complete a project like this with less layers and back and forth and more. Um, more building up and less pushing things back, maybe. Uh, on the other hand, those layers create depth and interest. It's fun to look closer and see what hints of background you can decipher. And for me, I know what's behind all that and it's kind of a special inside secret. I'm using a little darker green for the initial background color of the bushes in the foreground to help them stand out more. Generally, to create depth, you'll use more detail up front and the colors will fade the deeper you get into the background. I should mention that I'm also taking breaks to let things dry between some of these layers, just stopping the camera and I don't always mention it. It allows me a fresh perspective too when I return to the page after taking a little break. I'm continuing to add layers to build up the tree colors and I'm using just a few colors, yellow, burnt 
sienna and yellow ochre. I also looked at my supply of mulberry paper to see if there were any colors that might fit in and uh, tore off some of the ones that I found gluing them down with a matte medium and I found that they worked really well to kind of soften those white stenciled areas. That's very encouraging. When I add another layer of uh, watercolor greenery to the forefront, I don't want this smooth uniform wash here. So after I apply it, I'm just using my fingers to dab the paint, which just gives it a little texture. I'll let the green dry before I start on the flowers. And this green is pretty dark, so I know I can't paint over them with light color and a typical amount of water if I'm going to do them in watercolor. Acrylic paints would be no problem, but my colors are limited and so is my experience pretty much with acrylics. I could use watercolor straight out of the tube without adding water, which of course dilutes it, but that's more like working with thick acrylic paint, except the acrylics dry permanent and watercolor reactivates with moisture. I keep pondering what scripture might fit this project when it's done. Most often I create something inspired by a word or a verse or a Bible theme, but this time I just dove in and I'm waiting to see what it inspires. I like the way that last layer of brown started developing a more rustic feel to the window. But I'm thinking about the blue sky and I think I want it to be a little more impactful. Maybe because I'm tucked into a warm home doing what I love in the midst of this rainy, cold day. It's windy outside. It's beautiful though with all the fall colors, but I'm so thankful to be inside and doing what I love. I'm letting the darker blue called Payne's Gray drip and move around as I tilt the page. It's gonna produce a more ominous sky surrounding this cozy rustic window and all the colorful trees. I've been building up depth with all the layers of color in the trees and it's time to start adding some detail now. I've just been using watercolor paints, but now I'm gonna use some acrylic and I'm gonna apply them with a sponge. I decided to expand my color selection by using some watercolor paint straight out of the tubes mixed in with the acrylics here and there so that I can get the right browns and greens and fall colors. I'm beginning to add some tree trunks and branches using a variety of browns and yellows. I'm tucking parts of them behind the leaves and branches of the surrounding trees and will continue to add layers of color to them. I'm hoping the darker areas will reflect shadows and create bark-like looks to the trunks of the trees. I'm using dark green sepia and black with a fan brush to stroke in some tall grass and stems in the flower area. I've added several layers to those purple flowers and even a yellow center to try to bring them to life, but they still look really dull to me. Uh, after sponging on color for the trees, I also used a sponge to add some white and black among the leaves, and that contrast helped bring the whole thing to life. I was hoping that the yellow cinders on the flowers might do that too, but it didn't help much. So I went ahead and I did sponge in some white, which helped the grass area, but the flowers still need help. I'm gonna add some shadows to the window with a number 6B charcoal pencil, which is a softer lead, and I can smudge it with a wet brush once I lay it down. I'm not quite ready to give up on the flowers, so I came in with a crimson red accent color, which really didn't help much in the end. I also felt that the windowsill needed a small accent and found a bird in one of my magazines, so I cut that out and glued it on with the matte gel medium. I drew in the legs with a black micron pen and then I used my white jelly roll pen to make an eyeball. And then I thought I'd try that for some flower highlights to see if that might brighten them up and bring them to life. I also added some white paint to the purple to tone it down a bit and paint some of the uh, petals with that lighter color, which helped a lot. This is a long project and as I kind of wrap it up with some final touches to the bird with my black micron pen and some soft pastels, I'm thinking back at how blessed I am at this point in life to be warm and safe in the presence of my Savior and 
landed on two words to finish it off. Thankful heart. I hope you find yourself thankful and grateful today as well, knowing that Jesus loves you, our Lord and Savior is with you. God bless you.